Hey guys, I'm doing this. Kev Tech here bringing another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday. And today I want to go over IT interview questions. Obviously, if you're new to my channel, you know what to do. Rate, comment, subscribe, give me a thumbs up. Greatly appreciate it. So today we're going to go over interview questions that were shared with me. And I always say, uh, dude, girl, gal, whoever it is, please share your interview questions because I want to go over them and, and I want to see if I'm able to answer these interview questions because you're going to get a lot, ask a lot of different types of interview questions, which is why I make these types of videos. So uh, the gentleman, the gentleman shared his interview questions with me, and I'm gonna go over them. So he actually landed the job, which is I'm happy about that. He got a job, um, he got hired. Uh, he got a job uh, being in one of the training platforms that I'm part of with Job Skillshare. So I'm happy. I'm happy for him. So I have the questions right here. It's on the top of because I have three monitors. I have it on this screen up here. So you could, that's why if you see me looking up. It's because of that. Hey guys, how you doing? Good afternoon. This, today's video is sponsored by KevTech Academy. And KevTech Academy, we actually do hands-on training. We have low-cost training. We have pay-what-you-can training. So in KevTech Academy, we have Microsoft Azure training, which is pay-what-you-can, starting at zero dollars. We also have Server 22 Fundamentals training, which has group policy, Active Directory, password set account creation, delegation access, RSAT tools, et cetera, et cetera, as low as $10 is on demand. Uh, and then we have IT support interview preparation, which covers how to land a job in IT. And we go over how to build a home lab, et cetera, et cetera, and prepares you for a job interview and how to brand yourself on LinkedIn is as low as $0. We we'll pay what you can. And we are offering now coaching services as well, since everyone's been asking me for that. So as low as $125 a month, you get access to me on a private Discord. We do weekly check-ins. I just checked in with a bunch of people today. And I'm going to share my Discord screen so you guys could see it. So I have a private Discord that is hosted by me, Oni. And we've been just talking back and forth with different people. Right now, I have six students on it. And we're going to continue to grow. And I, I, for a limited time, we're not going to have a lot of students, just a, a few Oni, because I want to make it as productive as, as as possible but i also want to make sure that i i am able to talk to each individual person one-on-one -on -one and focus on their career and focus on the career trajectory and also focus on their path of what they want to do whether it's getting into it support or another role all right with that being said um let me just get back to the video you see me looking up it's because of that so question number one is what steps would you take to resolve a user who tells you their monitor is not working so obviously, if someone's monitor is not working, the first thing you want to do is you want to check the physical cable. So if a monitor is not working, you want to check the monitor. Maybe because this has, you know, my computer has a monitor cable on it. So check the cable, see if it's plugged in correctly. So that's number one. Um, if a monitor is not working too, sometimes it's like, it sounds silly, but sometimes we accidentally turn this off by asking. You can turn off and on a monitor. So it, maybe that's not on. Uh, maybe the power is not plugged in on the monitor. So it could be several reasons why it's not working. It could also be... Um, display drivers, like we have display drivers and sometimes the monitor doesn't work because the drivers are missing. Um, the graphics card drivers are missing. It could be several reasons, but just to give you a real life questions and answers, that's my answer for that. Oh, it could be your monitor. Uh, monitor power is not on. Maybe the monitor is faulty. It could be the cable is not, cable is loose, it's not plugged in correctly. It could be the drivers, um, several reasons. So that's number one. Number two is if user calls and saying they cannot connect to certain websites, how would you resolve this issue? So when it comes to website issues, first of all, I want to know if it's affecting everyone or is it just affecting that one user? That's the first thing I want to do. Second thing I want to know is if we have a proxy server or we have, we're have we using a third-party tool to block a website like Zscaler or Pablo, Pablo Alto. Like certain companies have certain websites that are blocked by default because they have a firewall built in or something built in to block that website. So if they do that user may have to submit a ticket and actually have that website whitelisted. Um, I, uh, you could also do is you could also check the website yourself. Like I'm the IT guy. So like if I'm not able to go to that website myself either, then at that point I would have to go talk to my manager or talk to my coworker and see, oh, is this website blocked? Do we have this blocked by default? How does this work? Are we blocking it on purpose? Or is that what's going on? Like you want to know these things. If you know, if, if you know these things and, um, they may have to submit a ticket, get it approved, and get it whitelisted, and then they're able to log in after that. And the network team has to whitelist it, or maybe the IT support team has access to do that, and they'll whitelist it. So hopefully that answers that question. All right. Um, then number three is tell me about your greatest achievement at work or non-work related. So this could be when I ask you this. This is like when this is so you want to do like a project-based question. So my answer for this one was I help 
I helped migrate 300 laptops during the pandemic COVID. So we had a bunch of desktops that everyone everyone was remoting into. And unfortunately, um, sometimes desktops get shut off by default because of group policy or, or desktops get shut off because it just gets shut off because something happened to the computer or maybe someone was cleaning and they disconnected the, the power by accident in the office. You don't know, right? You have people that go in the office that maintain that stuff. So I literally migrated everyone to the laptops, the 300 laptops, migrated everyone's profile, migrated their information, migrated their data, because each individual person has a personal share drive that belongs to them. So I would just grab that data, put it on the personal share drive, and then migrate it over to their desktop, their new desktop, and then just move everything over, set up all their preferences. It took me like a month to do, to do all that, but that was one of the things I was proud of because not only did we, we got rid of all the assets of hardware that were in the office, we were able to have everyone set up properly with their laptops. Not only that, we were able, able to check their internet connections. We were able because every person has a different setup. So I had to help each individual person with their own setup, customize it, and make sure that they have internet and their internet is working properly. Because some of these people never used Wi-Fi in their life before, and some of these customers never had a proper setup for internet. So that's something that I'm proud of because I was able to migrate a bunch of people into laptops and also remove their desktops. That's just one of my achievements. All right. Number four is why do you want to work for us? I want to work for you. I want to work for you guys because I went online. I did some research online using uh you can't you just say Glassdoor, but just say I, I did some research online and I found this company is a good company to work for. There's an opportunity to grow, and the team seems like a really good team. And I think I would be I, I think it would be a great opportunity not only for me to grow, but an opportunity for me to learn stuff that I never done before in IT which is why I applied to this role. So it's something like that. I guess it's something like small, straight to the point. It doesn't have to be crazy, something like that, okay? Can you explain a time when you dealt with an angry caller? How did you handle it? So usually when when I when I have an angry caller, end user, or someone that's upset and angry with me, I let them vent. I let them say what they have to say. Once I let them vent, then I'll, I'll, I obviously I like to just let them say what they have to say, but then I would just try to help them as best as I possibly can without cutting the conversation, without interrupting them, but also I'll try to, um, uh, I guess, alleviate the situation by just going straight to the point. Like, what is the problem? Why are you angry? Why are you upset? What is, what's going on here? And then um, when we resolve the issue, I would just probably keep the ticket open. That's just my style of working. I, if, I, if I have a user that's upset and angry, typically I keep the ticket open for 48 hours before I close it. Even though I resolve the issue, and they're still angry, I'll just follow up with them. Are you still having this issue? Is this still a problem? Is it okay if I close a ticket? I don't close a ticket on the fly. I literally keep it open for another 24 hours just to keep that customer happy and just cool down the situation. That's just how I work because I probably close a ticket and the customer's just like, you know, it's just it's like whatever, right? But there's some customers that if you keep the ticket open, you, know, you show that you care about them, they actually will appreciate that. So... That's how I do my work, if that if that makes sense. All right. Um, you have a two to three minute left to the end of the shift, and you get a ticket that you know will take forty five minutes to work on. Would you? So, this happens to this happened to me a lot when I when I worked in support. So yeah, I would grab the ticket and I would assign it to someone else. Then I will let the whoever whoever is in my department, I let them know the ticket is gonna is I'm gonna assign the ticket to you, or I would just have one of my colleagues that is working in that shift, the afternoon shift or whatever shift it is, have them pick up the ticket or talk to my manager. Oh, this is ticket is in the queue. I have to leave. Can someone take, take over this ticket? And at the same time, I will communicate with the customer or oh, um, this ticket is the ownership of the ticket has been changed to XYZ user. He will handle all your inquiries and questions. He or she will handle all your inquiries and questions. Um, and that's it. So like, just, just gotta like move the ticket over to someone else because obviously you're leaving. Right. So it doesn't make any sense. So that's how you, that's how you handle that, that situation. Um, next one is tell me a time I had to deal with a difficult person. I mean, obviously in any job you worked in support, you had to deal with a difficult person. Like, I had one user that he was upset with me because his laptop was extremely slow. Uh, and he was just, he just was having a bad day and, um, computer was really slow. And then, um, it's just a silly issue. Like, I, I, I'm not going to get mad or angry or upset, but this guy was angry at me because his computer was super slow. Why is everything so slow? Right? So he'll open up Outlook. It'll be slow. He'll open up Excel. It would be slow. He would try to print. It would be slow. And then 
I went on his machine. I noticed that he never he hasn't rebooted over a hundred days. So I just rebooted his machine. So I'm like, I'm gonna reboot your machine. Um, go get some coffee, go get tea, come back, and you should be all set after that. So that's literally what I just rebooted his machine. Save all his documents. Like I, I went file, save as, file, save as, save everything that he had open. And then all the documents he had, I just drag and drop, put them on the desktop. And I made I made a folder call, call um his name on it and just put it there. Then rebooted the whole machine. And I put everything back where everything was. Once he logged in, I put everything back where he was, and he was happy after that. And if you know, we later we found out that it's just just needed a reboot. Simple as that. So sometimes you have customers like that. So you just gotta have a lot of patience. That's, that's the that's the thing. You're getting paid to have patience, <laughs> pretty much. So hopefully that answers that question. I'm, I, you got to be like Doctor Phil a little bit. Uh, where do I see myself in the next five years? So in the next five years, I would love to be in. I would love to be in this company, probably as a different role, maybe in IT system admin, cybersecurity, maybe be a uh, part of the management team. So like, this is a good question. They, they like to ask these types of questions because they want to see where you want to go in your career. They don't want to just say, oh, I'm going to be in help desk for five years. Like, <laughs> Obviously, we don't say that, right? So hopefully that answers your question. So you want to make sure you give them a, a trajectory of what you want to do in the next five years, whether it's sysadmin, cybersecurity, network admin, whatever it is, right? You want to make you want to talk about that, if that makes sense. So that's it. That's all the interview questions I have for you guys today. If you find this video helpful, please let me know in the comments down below. If you want to see more interview videos, please let me know in the comments down below. I have a few more that I haven't done in a while. It's been a while. But um, that's with that being said, I hope you guys have a wonderful day and a wonderful Saturday. Later. Peace.